Uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Cuba's ambassador. Uh, Cuba, uh, you know, is uh, chair of G77, right? Uh, so Cuba, in a way, is central to the, the debate about global south in some ways. Also, you know, I am reminded of the iconic photograph of Mrs. Gandhi hugging then Cuba's leader, uh, the legendary iconic Fidel Castro in 1983. So we're talking 1983 and 2023. Two different set of photographs. One is Prime Minister Modi hugging Commodore's president. Uh, Excellency, uh, you uh, would like to speak on Cuba's perspective, how Cuba sees the global south, and also, do you see any rivalry here, any, con you know, that different claimants who want to be seen as leaders of the global south? Uh, what is your view? So, good morning, Namaskar. First, I would like to thank the, the professor and the honorable speaking speakers for, for giving us this possibility to, to dialogue, to exchange about these uh, relevant issues. As the professor said, we are coming from a humble position because obviously we are not a member of the G20. But the, the global south, the rise of the people of the south, has been a fundamental principle of the Cuban uh, foreign policy. And Cuba, despite being a small country with an, uh, an economy blocked by the, the biggest uh, economic and political power in the world, historically has been, we have been always together with the, the, the countries and the people of the global south in different ways and in different moments in Africa, in Latin America, in the South of Asia, of Asia and in the Pacific. Today perhaps the, the, better, the better reflection of that is the, the Cuban medical cooperation uh, that is extended even to the, the Pacific. Uh, and during the, the COVID pandemic more than uh, 70 different Cuban medical brigades went to more than 50 countries in order to, to help to, to mitigate the consequences of the pandemic. So the, the commitment of Cuba with the Global South is, is, is completely uh, full. We have, uh, as I say, it's a, it's a fundamental principles, principle of the Cuban foreign policy. And uh, we can say with some pride that historically we have been together with India defending the rise of the global south during the 60s, the 70s, in the fighting together and defending together the rise of the countries for, for the independence against the colonialism. And today we can say also with some pride that we share many common positions in the multilateral and the international arena defending the, the rise of the global south the, the right for the development, the right to, to adopt a, an autonomous model of development for the, for the rights of, uh, and the interests of their people. So we have been together with India, we are together with India today, and, and we recognize the capacity of India also to uh, understand and to transmit in the proper way in the G20 the interests, the aspiration, the dreams of the, the people of the South. As the, in the same way, we, we recognize the, the role, of course, of South Africa and, and Brazil, which is supposed to be here, but it's not here. So uh, this is something that we can say with, with some pride that we have been together in, in, in this path uh, for the Global South. So we, uh, this year, as uh, as well uh, as the professor said, we are chairing the G77 in China. This group, uh, the G77 in China, is comprised, uh, at the beginning was there were only 77 countries, but today it comprises 134 countries. So if we uh, evaluate properly, is the biggest group of countries, the biggest international intergovernmental group uh, representing the peoples and the countries of the South. 
And of course, we attach all the, the full priority to uh, our presidency in the G77 in, in China. And just a week after the G20 summit in Delhi, we celebrated in Cuba the summit of the G77. It was a very important summit. We consider that it was a, a, the result was a big success for the countries of the South. 116 countries were representing in the Havana summit. 31 head of state or government attended uh, to the summit on Havana. Different kind of um, delegation headed by ministers, vice presidents, of course. And we we can say also uh, we can count also with the we could count with the the Indian delegation and many countries here represented. So the result of the summit in Havana showed that it was very not only important it was indispensable that the the gathering the summit the the to the exchange the dialogue of the global south. There was a very profound and substantive debate uh, which was oriented not only to the debate, not only to the change of position, but also to take actions uh, in defending the Global South uh, in the different multilateral and, and international organizations. In a very realistic way, in a very pragmatic way, there was a big debate about the challenge that the countries of the South, they face, and about the, the ways, the solutions to the consequences of the unfair economic international order. There was a big uh, generalized worry about the effect of the multidimensional global crisis the increase of the poverty, the increase of the hunger, the increase of the prices due to the increases of uh, the inflation and the climate disasters that uh, affect mostly our countries, the, the most vulnerable countries and of course vulnerable islands that are represented here today, for example, like Cuba, Seychelles, the General Secretary of the United Nations who attended to the summit in Havana, he said, the world is failing to the Global South. So in this phrase, uh, it summarized the feeling that was uh, predominantly during the summit. We uh, stimulated, we talked a lot about the importance uh, of the South-South cooperation, but we also uh, debate a lot about the importance of the North-South cooperation in order for the, the countries of the, let's say, the, the, the developing countries of the North to understand the need for the changing of the, the international economic world order and to improve all the commitment, all the historical commitment with the Global South. The, the summit was a uh, very emphatic about the need of the urgent and profound reform of the financial international architecture that will allow the countries of the south to have an access the proper access to all the necessary financial funds in order to achieve the goals of the sustainable development the south condemned in Havana, the Global South condemned in Havana, the unilateral economic coercive measures that are applied to many members of the, uh, the countries of the South. And the, the main topic of the, the summit in Havana was the the, the challenge of the, the, the development, the role of science, technology and innovation in, in that field, in the field of innovation, science and technology, there was approved an action plan which includes uh, asking the General Secretary, the, the General Assembly of the United Nations to call a high level meeting on science, technology and innovation for the development of the Global South. It was approved to establish 
a high level meeting of Minister of Science, Technology of Innovation of the Global South, and different kinds of programs of cooperation and trilateral cooperation for the benefit of the Global South. We consider that the G77 in China group uh, went out of the summit more united, stronger in, he, in their positions of defending their interests, their aspiration, and as a, and, and the role of the group was strengthened as a, a, a relevant actor in the international arena, in the multilateral arena. Cuba will uh, hand over the, 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 the presidency of the group to Uganda next year. And uh, next year, of course, Uganda will organize a relevant summit, uh, the summit of the South in Kampala, which, which we attach all the, the priority. So as a result of the, the G70 summit in Havana, the main demand, the main aspiration of the Global South is that we need to change the, the world. We need to change the world international order in order to have all the necessary rights, the support and the commitment uh, in order to build the models for our own development, in order to, to achieve the, the goals of the sustainable development. So very briefly, uh, I, I would like just to mention a very important issue of the international law, which is a topic we are talking today, and, and has to do with perhaps the most sensitive political and economic issue for Cuba. You know that for more than 60 years, Cuba has been an object of uh, an economic, financial, and, and commercial bro blockade from the government of the United States. Last uh, November 2nd, the General Assembly of the United Nations, for the 31st time, approved a resolution demanding the blockade. Only two countries opposed that resolution. Uh, of course, the United States and Israel. The rest of the world, including India, of course, dem demand the lifting of the blockade. The blockade we are facing today is a reinforced blockade. It has been a reinforced blockade after 2019 with more than 243 new measures that try to suffocate the Cuban economy and to try to create a situation of economic crisis in Cuba to, to, to show that the Cuban government has uh, the incapacity to, to govern the country. This is the, the adjective of the blockade today, and it has been from the same beginning 60 years ago. The blockade today makes the Cuban economy to lose every year more than $5 billion, which you cannot understand for a small country like Cuba with a population of 11 million, the, the impact of the economy. We can see that, for example, that only last year, 2022, the Cuban economy could have grown 9% without the blockade. So these are just a small example to understand that the blockade continues, not only continues, has been reinforced as a main obstacle for the, the social and economic development of Cuba. And when all the, the world, including India, they vote for the, the resolution demanding the blockade, uh, this is not a matter of being in the side of a particular country. This is not a matter of being on the side of a position of Cuba. This is a, a matter of being in the side of international law. It's in the matter of being in the side of justice. It's the matter of being in the side of the chapter, the, the, the letter of the United Nations. So I use this opportunity to deeply appreciate India, to deeply appreciate all the countries represented here for, for this position and for being once again in the, in the side of the justice. So I would like to finalize with this. And, 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 and sorry, but you mentioned this big uh, image of Fidel Castro hogging uh, Indira Gandhi. 
Uh, this year we are we are celebrating also the 50th anniversary of the the first uh, Fidel Castro visit to India. And, and I should say that that moment it was uh, during the second visit in 1983 during the celebration in India of the seventh non-aligned summit. And, and of course, this I'm, I'm as a stage as a symbol of our bilateral friendship. Uh, but Fidel Castro was very polite. And he asked Indira Gandhi before, can I ask, can I hold you? <laughs> <laughs> and she very polite also, she said, of course, she, she, she didn't have an, another choice. So as a result, it was such a, a big and nice picture. So thank you very much.